Good afternoon. It's State Representative Robert Martwick again, coming to you from my office in Springfield, Illinois. We're on a temporary break. We've been in session since 8.30 this morning. It's now about 4.30 in the afternoon. We're going back into session. We've got committees uh, as we work to try and finish up this uh, session, which is we've got one day left after today. So we still got a, quite a few hours left in today's day. And then uh, tomorrow midnight is the budget deadline, which I hope there will be a bunch to vote on. That's my big hopes for here. I've told lots of people I'm ready to vote, vote for a balanced budget, any kind of balanced budget. Just bring me one. Um, so I posted a video yesterday, got a lot of reaction, and that's good. I'm glad. Please uh, be involved. And I understand nobody likes taxes. Trust me, I don't like taxes. I don't want to raise taxes, but I also don't want to perpetuate the problem, right? This is a common theme that I've been having. If we don't balance the budget and we just kick the can down the road, meaning we just keep accumulating debt, well, then the next generation, meaning your kids and my kids and grandkids, are going to have to solve an even worse problem that we have to face today. And I won't do that. I won't do that. We're going to fix this problem. Uh, at least I'm going to fight for a fix that we fix it today. We start addressing it now. The sooner we pay this debt down, the more likely we are to fix the financial condition of our state for future generations. And that's important to me. I hope it is important to you. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, as we close in on this budget deadline, a little bit about Illinois budget and tax facts. I put up this thing yesterday. I'm going to cut right to the bottom here that showed how if we do a tax increase of 5%, uh, from 3.75 to 5%, uh, and we do that tax increase, it would cost the middle class family, average middle class family, about $600 a year. Don't get me wrong. I, I think that's a big number, and I think it's a number we should be cognizant of. But I also showed that if we don't raise the taxes, and we make the cuts to the programs that the governor is proposing, not me, the governor is proposing, that would cost that same family $67,000 in additional college tuition costs if they sent two kids to state universities. So, you know, th th this is just facts. If you don't like those numbers, that's fine. I know nobody likes this number, but if you're going to argue with me about this math, just show me your math. That's all I ask of everybody. I've done the work on this. I've done the homework. I want you to, to join me in this discussion. I don't expect anybody to like this. I just say that if you're a middle-class family and you look at the potential between $600 a year or $67,000 in additional costs, you, you've got to say to yourself, well, I've got to choose one or the other because you can't have neither, right? Neither is not an option. It's one or the other. But let's talk about some Illinois tax facts. This is important. Again, these are facts. If you don't like them, I can't help you. I don't have alternative facts. I only have these, right? So number one, let's talk about our income tax. Where are we? Right now at 3.75%, we are the eighth lowest income tax in the country. Let me repeat that. Eighth lowest in the country. 42 states have higher income taxes than us, okay? And, and really, that could be 43, depending on how you look at Indiana. Indiana has higher taxes in some places and lower taxes in others. At 5%, which is where we were before the tax went down to 3.75, we were the 16th lowest income tax in the country. So we're not talking about going to, to become the highest income tax state in the country. Nowhere near that. In fact, in in many states like Minnesota and Wisconsin and Iowa and New York and California, they have substantially higher tax rates than we do, right? Dramatically higher. So this is not a huge cut. Don't get me wrong, $600 is still a lot of money, but this is where we are. It's just facts, right? You might not like either of them. Maybe you'd want us to be the lowest. I would like us to aim for that, but that's going to take some work. Number two, what else do you need to know about us? A lot of people say to me, why don't you guys cut some spending? Why, don't you, why are you always looking for tax increases? Why don't you cut some spending? A lot of comments on the last video. Well, here you go. Number one, year after year after year cuts, we now have the lowest number of employees, state employees, per capita in the entire country. That's right. Lowest number, right? Not Indiana, not Idaho, not New Mexico, not Arizona, not Mississippi. Illinois has the lowest number of state employees per capita in the country. So the idea that we could cut more, there's not a lot of fruit left on the tree, right? There's just not much left to cut. That's just a fact, okay? Additionally, people say, how come you haven't made any cuts? A friend of mine wrote to me about this on the last Facebook page and said, why don't you guys ever make any cuts? Um, right here. Since 2006, since 2006, we have made over $6 billion in cuts per year, right? This is we compared to our budget in 2006, 
we now spend more than six billion dollars less on education, human services, and health care. Six billion dollars out of a thirty-five billion dollar budget have been cut away to cuts to education and human services and health care. Additionally, in the budget proposals that are being proposed by the Democrats in the Senate and the Democrats in the House, call for an additional $2 billion in cuts. That's an awful lot of cuts. So to say that we haven't looked to make cuts is not right. We've made cuts year after year after year after year after year. And that's caused its own problems. So people say, you've made all these cuts. You've got low taxes. What seems to be the problem? Well, the problem is right here. We have the highest debt in the country, and it's growing. It's growing. In fact, because of Governor Rauner's unwilling to sit down and solve this budget for the last three years, that debt is growing by $11 million a day. $11 million a day. Imagine that, right? What we need to do is we need to stem this bleeding, right? We need to stop accumulating debt and start paying it down. And when we do, and we get fiscally responsible, then we'll have more money to do the things that we need to do and the things that will help put us back in good financial health. For instance, number six, we are dead last in the country in funding K-12 through education. Imagine that. 50th, right? Lowest in the number of state employees, and we are the lowest in funding for education. And this is one of the biggest line items in our budget, right? Funding for K-12 through education, and yet we so horribly underfunded. Well, what happens when you underfund education? Where do you think 65 to 85% of your property taxes go? They go to fund education. Why so much? Why are your property taxes so high? Because when the state doesn't properly fund education, the cost has to be made up by local property taxes. Hence, we have the highest property taxes in the country. Listen, there's no doubt we're a high-tax state. But the reason we're a high-tax state is because for years we refuse to be fiscally responsible and close a budget deficit. What does that mean? That means making cuts, and that means making tax increases to make sure we balance the budget. That takes courage. But what happens is too many people say, don't raise my taxes, don't raise my taxes. And a politician says, well, I don't want to cut the programs because nobody wants me to cut the programs. And I don't want to raise the taxes because nobody wants me to raise the taxes. And instead, what they did in our state for years was they kicked the can down the road by not paying into the pension fund, accumulating a debt that we cannot get out of, we must pay. And that has made us unable to properly fund education, and that's caused high property taxes. If you want to fix this equation, if you want to make this better, the first thing that you have to do is stop doing what got you into the mess in the first place. I believe in fiscal responsibility. If we do what we need to do, as much as it's going to hurt, I'm not looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward to taking the hits that I'm taking for it. But if I do the right thing, if I balance the budget through cuts and tax increases and we go to zero, we can start paying down our debts. When we pay down our debts, we'll have more money to put into education, which means less money that has to come out of your property taxes. We balance things out. We become a more competitive state. And let me tell you, Reducing property taxes would be the number one business-friendly thing we could do in this state. The high property taxes drives businesses out more than any other tax that we have. Most of them don't pay corporate income taxes. This is the Illinois tax and budget picture. This is what it looks like. All I'm saying is, let's not keep doing what got us into the mess in the first place. Let's start a new course, and that course should be fiscally responsible. We should pay down our debts balance our budgets, and do what's right. And the last three years of running massive, massive debts and accumulating more debt, massive budget deficits and accumulating debt, has only made this situation worse. It's going to take years for us to get out of. But here's the thing. I won't kick the can down the road anymore. You will have to elect someone else to do that if that's what you want. I won't do it. I will not put this burden upon the backs of the next generation, which includes my son. I won't do that. Um, so if that's what you want, I'm not your guy. But if you want to fix it now and you want to make it better for your children and your grandchildren, then, then you might want to consider looking at the facts and joining me. Now, again, I'm happy to hear that I'm wrong. These are just facts. If you want to write me and tell me facts that, that, that show that this isn't right, 
I'm welcome to hear it. If you've got math that shows my math isn't right, I'm, help, I'm welcome to hear it. I would prefer if you didn't just chime in and say that I'm a manic and lackey and insult me. That really doesn't further the discussion, but whatever. You can have that opinion. You can even write it. I may delete it, but let's talk about this. There's a little bit more than 24 hours left until we solve this crisis, and, and my guess is we won't. So we will be here in an extended session working on it, trying to get it all the way through the end of June. Um, but the more you inform yourself about the facts of what's going on here, the more we can have a legitimate discussion about the right path forward. This is one path forward. Let me repeat what I said at the beginning. I will support any path forward. I will support more cuts and lower tax increases. I will support higher tax increases. I will support whatever balances the budget so we don't make it worse for the next generation and we solve our financial problems today. That's what will make the state of Illinois better. Happy to hear your thoughts and comments. Please reach out to me. Thanks for watching. I will update again tomorrow. It's going to be a crazy day. And then I'll give you a wrap-up on Thursday after the budget deadline has passed at midnight. Um, weigh in. Let me know your thoughts. See you next time.